Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Bumbulavichus AK Tom 10 and today we are going to review one of our last season races which is Geometia's MTB uh, Taurea MTB Cup in Lithuania. So it happened in Telche and uh, this is two day stage race where the next day we are going to participate in Platali. So it's very unusual in Lithuania to have two days races. So you can't miss such opportunity. And here we could have heard maybe that organizer said that it's 30 seconds up to the start. And this was one of the longest 30 seconds ever because you will see why. As usual, unfortunately, as usual, in Jamaitios Taure, there are no starting gates, even though there are some participants who uh, go for one or two laps. It's just a huge mess, and uh, I don't know if it's so hard to make gates. Uh, the reason why I'm explaining about this is that here I started uh, at the first row already because there was no place in the back of the gate and you can see that there are two or three more rows already in front of me because those guys are out uh, to the starting line even uh, later than I did. I did like 10 minutes before the race and they had no area to go and they just st stopped in front. And there was no indication when to start so uh, you will see in the full on board how the participants just decided well should we start yeah let's go and that's how we started the race was it so difficult to do a countdown you tell me but uh, anyways it wasn't anything uh, too bad because we just went on this paved road and that's kind of it mm, but uh, it was just uh, strange appearance and it's definitely not something which is common like in Latvia as you could have seen on the right where there's a young uh, guy who's probably going to be um, worth mentioning in the future as well because he's racing very strong so yeah because he came here from Latvia I can use an, as an example we are in Latvia and we will sell the marathons they just do some silence pause and then all of a sudden uh, race uh, referee just blows the whistle and you start this was not the case and you can see that we are already racing quite intensely i tried to overtake this guy but there was not enough room left so it was just uh, additional power output without any result and basically I haven't ridden this track in the past so it's the first time for me doing that but I did this starting a uh, few of the start kilometers before the race and I knew that in front there will be muddy place and you will see in a moment how it ends up <coughs> so the guy just uh, stuck in the mud he felt on the right and apparently uh, he just uh, crashed into me so I had to stop as well and there was already significant gap in front and we had to close it but uh, during that moment of our co collision I noticed afterwards that uh, the uh, cover of rear shock on spark model just uh, went out loose and it was hanging um, almost completely open so I managed to take it uh, into my back pocket but it cost me even more time and you can see that here on the gravel road uh, there is a huge gap already but somehow I managed to close it and what was a very uh, happy moment for me that in front there was still the main group so that means uh, nothing is lost yet but definitely one match was already burned on that sprint to close the gap and actually even though the group here was moving uh, relatively slow i would say after that spurt after that sprint it was very difficult uh, to keep them 
but after a few minutes here and there it eventually became a very uh, normal ride and for some reason everyone here was not trying to push at all but of course it's just the beginning of a race even though it's already 13 minutes uh, on the course um, it didn't look like the front guys are going to accelerate fast and actually in this uh, whole group all over the whole width of the uh, track it was a bit sketchy because for some reason uh, our guys just uh, did some maneuver on the course and you had to just make sure not to hit their uh, rear wheel or handlebars i'm not uh, very uh, comfy when riding in those huge groups but at the same time um, I wouldn't say that uh, those extra movements from some of guys were needed at all and it was very difficult to ride here because there are a lot of leaves on the ground you don't know what is uh, behind them underneath them and you just have to make extra precautions and here uh, Irmantas uh, Kuczynskas went off the road but everything went fine for him except that he lost a few places here and there and a bottle of uh, water so <laughs> first team race was here for him and we are accelerating as hell and we will see how it will end up <laughs> Oh, and actually my head is very shiny from that light so yeah I will put this better on <laughs> anyways you could have seen that uh, the guy from Versmea MTB uh, he's Romka uh, Romas Kubelius he was not very friendly I would say the least on the first day and uh, after watching this video after the race, I probably understood why. Uh, it's because in front there was Arturas, Arturas Galginis, his teammate, and on that single track he didn't want it to allow me to overtake him, and uh, that caused a huge gap opening uh, against uh, Arturas. Maybe that was the reason, maybe not, but you could have seen that before that single track we were uh, close to each other, actually just a few bikes of a distance. And after that move from Romka, you can see that the gap opened and it was very difficult uh, to make an overtake there on that single track. But at the same time, he didn't want it to allow to pass him at all. So things happened. And uh, yeah, I will continue about that at some other place of this video probably but uh, thankfully Arturas didn't manage to get away too much and you can see that uh, this segment uh, I made 11th time on the day of the race it was actually uh, a bit of uh, wet and clumsy but uh, I guess because weather conditions were quite dry in compared to what could have been um, it went fine yeah, so on the race day, uh, there was uh, 200 participants or so and around 30 of them um, participated in elite two laps distance. So here a few of the guys who probably were running one lap overtook me and here uh, Christiana Strauba made some uh, move and pose for a camera. So that's always a good thing to have uh, good emotions on the course. Of course, I understand at some point that <laughs> going with a camera doesn't help you in sense where others might go a bit faster uh, in order to just participate in the shot and um, yeah, that sometimes doesn't help at all and also I'm carrying extra weight which doesn't help either, right? But in the end we have uh, those videos available for us to, suck, to see and I believe that uh, it's, it's worth it. An extra sharing of those emotions on the course is also a great thing to have. 
Um, here I decided that uh, our group is potentially could be running faster and I just went in front because who doesn't who does want to go slower when they can some do prefer that I don't so I usually don't stay in the group for if and for uh, long enough if I feel that I have something um, in my legs sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't but uh, I believe that you should be trying no matter what and uh, in the long run you will understand what works and what doesn't and that's just a learning curve. I'm racing for two seasons now, this is my second season and uh, I'm trying to understand some things uh, on my own because if, some, if someone tells you how to do it, it's a lot more difficult to use that knowledge set from others than to feel everything on your own and uh, make those mistakes. It's always very nice when someone uh, who you are not even familiar with um, cheers for you. So thanks a lot for those who uh, spend that energy and uh, it's always it's getting hot here but it's also too bright. <laughs> My forehead shines like you can't see in, even see anything. Anyways, uh, as usual, on the top left, you can see the lap data. So you can just rewind back and have a look what wattage and uh, other statistics, statistics I had on that lap. And here was very interesting situation where were two tractors going down. And you could have seen how close this participant with fat bike went uh, in front of me. So we had few collisions with him already uh, on this uh, race day and I just couldn't understand how you should, uh, how you could make such overtake when there is a slippery ground, you are risking your own health as well as others. So it just blows my mind how, some participate in the race without even thinking but of course you can overtake them and leave them in the dust right not always the case so even though i tried quite a few times to escape from them they are strong guys and they returned back and they continue doing uh, not the smartest things i would say and here is one of them where it was marked as uh, three exclamation marks. It was very narrow uh, bridge over the water. I stopped in order to make sure that others goes uh, successfully for that obstacle. And uh, here comes the fat bike. Apparently it turned out to be uh, during the whole um, race weekend that I had some bad luck with fat bikes I would say and I'm not sure whether they don't feel their um, measurements on the course or why are they participating in this way but uh, it was as it was and it's also worth mentioning that they are participating in a single lap distance so they are kind of um, trying to finish this single lap as fast as possible but at the same time if you are making others um, in the risky situations you should think what are you doing especially when they are not your direct competitors anyways you could have seen that i overtook them for nth time on the day and here i slipped and here they come again so that was kind of uh, exactly how whole the last section of the lap um, went through <laughs> it was also worth mentioning that um, there were some areas on the course in this section where it was uh, quite slippery so probably those fat bikes it was a lot more comfy going there but you will see that the guy with uh, take a look at the center of the screen 
So the one with blue fat bike, he continued looking over his, uh, over his shoulder and that uh, essentially resulted in two crashes for him. So here once again that uh, MTB guy uh, made an overtake which was uh, I would say not necessary because you just uh, go in front of others before the uh, stairs and if they have to uh, break etc so why to do such uh, maneuvers maybe he knew that in front there will be some wet area and uh, he will go faster and you can see it actually happened uh, but you could also have seen that um, the blue fat boy <laughs> again fell off I probably assume that uh, he used too much uh, tire pressure. I guess that was the reason because uh, here he just slipped over um, like there was no actual obstacle which could help him to go down, especially in those fat uh, bike tires. And you can see that I was uh, on the day of the race I was running quite uh, fast compared to what uh, I normally do and also compared to others and again I became behind uh, of this uh, there's me MTB rider and because I already knew that he is not the ones uh, who will allow you to go in front I didn't even try so you can see that my heart rate is uh, below the average and I'm just uh, waiting patiently because I know that it's already going towards the uh, final section of the lap and I also heard that there is announcements um, somewhere around it could be heard so that means uh, finish is real close so I decided not to even uh, try to do anything with that guy because he is uh, in my, uh, for my eyes, not an example how the racing should happen, and that's only the first day. So I am a bit of biased in terms of here and here. Uh, my second half, uh, Neringa, as always, did everything perfectly. So she handled me the water as well as uh, managed to even um, film that. So how amazing is that? And here you could have heard that. Oh, there are a lot of things happen, so I will continue after that. <laughs> so here I uh, catched Costas Cardales, who was in front uh, before the uh, start of a second lap, and we were going here together up to, um, you will see what happened there so here is uh, the same uh, wet place a lot easier to go there than there are no one around here and this was the decisive moment of the race where on the first lap we went straight and on the second we were continue racing where it was and you will see how i think that it should have happened so there was a guy who should have uh, directed us he was somewhere on the right but the only thing which was needed here is that you just had to mark that you should shouldn't go there and uh, you might think that all right thomas so you are participating in a race and you don't know the course it's partially true and partially not the reason is uh, before the race uh, through announcer, through a microphone, the one who just informs about every details of the race, he informs specifically that we are going to be two laps, 31 kilometer each, and in total, guess what should have been the distance. So he said that it's 62. If it's 62, then you have no doubts. You just go and that's kind of it. Apparently, it appears that there was a cut to the left and we went almost uh, half an hour a longer distance so here was some entertainment on the course which uh, required to stop on this muddy uphill anyways uh, it was Costas and me uh, the only two guys who went 
uh, on that extra course and uh, on the gravel road uh, Costas uh, wasn't able to continue going on that speed and he just uh, let me in front and I only saw him in the finish so imagine the situation where you had to go um, for I would say so Bieksha, the leader of the race uh, did it in 1 hour 53 minutes while I did it in 2 hours 30 but I did it uh, 11 12 kilometers more than I should and you could have seen here in the table that my speed uh, dropped I make, made this segment uh, running alone uh, one minute slower and this is not yet the area where the course would uh, connect and it was actually here so basically uh, others went from our direction and they just uh, took the corner to the left where I appeared from the wrong place and I had to continue here and I didn't actually knew that and I only figure out about it after the race so so the main problem was that organizers didn't even took a care of uh, how your GPS data looked like they just uh, put a random number out of nowhere uh, so they made my time to be um, two hours five minutes which is more like uh, something that it should have been but uh, at the same time um, I was running a lot uh, more complex course part so definitely that's the reason why my speed dropped on that part but anyways uh, you can see here that my camera uh, turned off I didn't know the reasons but I tried a few times to just uh, discon disconnect the cable etc uh, which sometimes helps because I'm always running with power bank and it looked like it might have worked out but you can see that it didn't so that's kind of end of the full on board but nothing interesting happened uh, in the remaining part of the race and we are ready to participate in our race which has to happen on some day so with that said uh, thanks for the time and uh, we will meet in Platale cheers